Hi, this is uh, this is the Freedom 2. I'm Philippe, the designer. This is Shane Tai and Johnny Duran, the both test pilots for Flow. Um, and here's the Freedom 2 size M, the glider that uh, Johnny's been flying. Um, Freedom 2 is full of very interesting features and good technology. Uh, I'll start talking about the risers. So the, the, the Freedom 2 has a very effective re risers steering. So you can, um, there's, there's a system where you can control the glider. Once you leave a climb and you, you're gliding, you can like, um, there's a set of pulleys that you can pull the rear riser and actually change the angle of attack. Um, so it's very efficient. So you can uh, steer the glider or you can catch any deflations or collapse that you might find on glide by just pulling, just controlling the pitch and deflations by rear riser steering. So, uh, uh, what I recommend for people flying, a little tip uh, from the PwC pilots, is to hold the glider like that and con like hold like this. So when you when you thermally, you do a half half wrap and you can use the brakes like that. But when you use the rear risers, you can just hold it like that because then you have a full extension of the brakes, so you have a bit of slack there. And it's rather than a lot of pilots like to fly like that, and then when you when you're using the rear risers, you you don't have that much. You've got that tension on yeah, the right there. That's right. So, um, so we use the PPS LS lines, which are uh, shift lines on the color uh, on the main lines, but they dynamo very small diameter. Uh, the mid cascade, this is the low cascade. The mid cascade, we have unsheathed lines. So the, so the second cascade, the mid cascade, is the elder rid lines. So it's all the way to the span of the glider. And the lines that connect the canopy are the Dyneema small diameter. So what you can see here is the the A attachment point, and that's uh, so when you inflate in the glider, you have more buyers on the attachment point on the A attachment points, the, the ones that are closer to the leading edge. At trim, you have a like an even spread, even tension. But when you on fly at bar, the bias goes more to the rear of the A attachment points, which changes the geometry a little bit and gives further stability to the to the glider. It makes the leading edge more solid. We use a, um, a proper shark nose that uh, enhances stability, improves performance, and and offers very good pitch stability. You see, there's a bottom contours on the airfoil. That's all that adds uh, safety, performance, and, and stability. It's a very pitch stable airfoil. Um, also, on the Freedom 2. It's a hybrid. Um, on the on two thirds of the glider, one third of the glider near the wing tip, we have a two liner. Uh, there's only two sets of lines attached to the glider, so that offers incredible performance and, and handling. But also, when you fly a bar, uh, you can really control the angle of attack on the wingtips in relation to the center of the glider, which uh, when you have a two-liner section, it's much easier to control the angle of attack to the desired angle that you that you want the glider to be flown at certain configurations. And in the case here, it's a full bar. On full bar, this glider is extremely stable because the angle of attack that we use here at that configuration at full bar, uh, we put in an angle that's it's it's coherent with the whole of 
first pan of the glider, so he makes it the very, very stable. It's, it's not an extreme angle of attack, uh, but it's enough to give enough solidity and performance. There's still a lot of washout, especially towards the stabile line. So there's quite a bit of a distance between. This is the last attachment point for the two liner section, and this is the stabile line that it's this section in every glider, in every pair of glider you can never change the angle of attack. And this, this is a section here that usually have a washout, a, a negative angle of attack in relation to the rest of the canopy. And that's a very considered in terms of how the glider handles, how the glider recovers after the collapses, but also how the, the performance can be enhanced if this is done right. So Shane uh, formed the glider quite a bit. Uh, what, what do you think about the handling? And it's a beautiful thing. The handling's really good, um, especially like I've flown on the coast a fair bit, and then also in uh, thermal conditions. Um, yeah, even lightly loaded on the coast, it's, it's very playful. So it's easy to wing over and quite fun. And then uh, thermally, it's really good. It turns well on bar. Is, it's beautiful, rock solid. The rear riser steering is, is nice and light. Um, basically, when I fly it cross country, it's just on bar everywhere, um, just on the rears. And, and How the much bar? Uh, normally around half ish, depending on the conditions. Um, full bar, it's rock solid. Um, it could have more bar. Like, it is so solid at full bar, you could push it faster, I reckon. So, there's, uh, there's, there's something very interesting on the Fusion, on the Freedom 2 as well. Uh, you can't see on this glider because this is one of the early uh, early prototypes that Johnny's been flying. But on the production serial, we use a combination of different plastic rods that allow us to fold the glider uh, in a way that you don't need to worry about uh, folding very carefully. Um, on the on this section of the glider, we have a stiff uh, plastic rod which gives support to the attachment points. Um, yeah, that kind of ends there. And that's very important for good uh, inflation characteristics and how, the, how clean the airfoil is. Uh, the top rod here, and this one is, is uh, it's transparent, but on the production one and the one that's been certified is orange. And uh, the, the orange one is a very flexible type of rod that continues on all the way to the two liner section. Uh, and the two-liner section is the same. Uh, the bottom one is the stiff one, but on the top bit is the transparent one. Uh, it goes all the way to the trailing edge. What it does is if you want to fold the glider in a compression bag, uh, you can. You don't need to worry about how you're going to fold the glider um, because, because it doesn't hold memory. So it can be folded in a... See, you see the orange one here? Um, yeah, it can be it can be folded without any special folding techniques like any other any other glider, any other three liner that has a shaft. On. The only thing you need to worry is to keep the leading, the leading edge cells packed in a constant tear bag because you want to preserve the from special, here yeah, to, there. to there. That's that's how that's that's the only bit that you have to worry. Yeah. So and Johnny Johnny's been uh, flying this glider. Um, he's a very well well known hang glider pilot and he's been flying paragliders with fires and he loves to fly the, the big glider and he keeps what keeps keeps up with all the the hot guns going guy guys flying two liners. Um, a question on um, the speed range and performance range. If it's nil wind, at what position is best glide? Um, if it's near wind when you're gliding, yeah, I'd like say, I'd say 50. If, if you leave a thermo and you're gliding, you can use 50% bar, and that's probably the best. 50% bar would be your best glide angle at yeah. nil wind. Yeah, 60. I, I, I think even if, if this guy has an extreme, extremely good glide, even against if, even a head um, headwind in comparison to some of the other gliders, Johnny can probably describe that when he flies against. Uh, so this is the first time I've heard that actually pushing on speed bar gives you a better glide than just at hands up and that's what you feel this glider 
achieves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would, I've flown a lot with a lot of ANCs and Ds, and I'm on the good days I'm full speed bar, and I find that I'm getting very similar glides as long as it's light winds. Um, but they're still a little bit faster, obviously, if they're at full speed bar. But if they're at not full speed bar, I find that I'm gliding almost the same as and most everyone else. How heavy on the weight range are you? I'm at the top, so I'm. This is up to 105 kilo, and I'm about 103 on it. So yeah. I'm, I'm at the top end. Um, but I'm. I keep getting blown away by how well it performs against the the higher gliders. So definitely goes well with the speed bar on. And for thermaling, what brake positions do you use? I normally just have um, just a single wrap on the, the actual brakes itself, not a full wrap around the lines. And I find it's pretty comfortable um, thermaling like that and it climbs super well. So the outside brake, are you just moving that a little bit, keeping it where you like? Pretty much, yeah, I just initiate with the inside brake, get the bank I want and then just just use the outside brake to, to level me out when I want to hit the surge or something. I'll try to flatten out a little bit and crank so, into it. So on this glider, we walked, I worked a lot on the arc of the glider because we wanted to have a, like a optimum washout. Uh, so the arc was designed for a purpose. Um, uh, thinking about performance, but we with this arc we also enhanced a lot the handling, how the glider keeps that nice agile bank when you're thermaling. Uh, and it's very easy to adjust the, that bank uh, the, and the rate of the turn. If you want to turn really tight, you can. If you want to do a, a flatter turn, it's also very easy. You can combine a little bit of weight shifting and the outside brake pressure to adjust that uh, rate of the bank. Yeah. I don't. I haven't flown anything else, so I can't compare. But people that have flown this say that the the brake pressure is just like the perfect amount of brake pressure that you want. So, and that's from people that have flown lots of different gliders. Um, like I said, I don't have anything to compare against, but it feels comfortable. For but what, what, it, what it what also sometimes the the true speed that you have on the rises there isn't really it's not a direct reflection of the top speed because it's where the lines are because of where the lines are but yeah it's a three liner so the so the C it ends here so it doesn't it's at 66 percent of the course uh, so it's supported by the D attachment point but the D attachment point doesn't bear any load it's just to help uh, inflation and recovery after a full a full stop um, so that's why 16 centimeters makes a glider one of the fastest ENV gliders in the market right um, the construction we have on this glider is, is a, it's, a, it's, it's a semi lightweight glider it's built with Skytex 32 grams the on the bottom and on the top surface, uh, it's around four, the meters are around 4.6 kilos. Uh, if only it was this. Uh, is there a lightweight and heavyweight version? This is the the mid lightweight, uh, and next year we're gonna come up. We're gonna release the Freedom to Light. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we say it was it was based was based on the fusion we use the fusion the fusion as a as a platform to improve and enhance and make the, the freedom too so on bar if you were at full bar the the glide angle in nil wind would it be equivalent to um, if you were hands up so what, what happens at full bar is um, this glider, the full bar, it still has a really good glide, uh, but in every glider, when you use a full bar, you you increase the sink rate. But because you're traveling faster, um, your glide angle is still very, very good. Um, this is due to the fact that the, the way the attachment points and the two liner section are all in unison when you apply the full bar, there's not much uh, camber deformation is purely just a change of angle of attack and we use a very solid airfoil and very efficient airfoil 
So you, you at full bar, you, you have this amazing glide. I think it's it's mind blowing to experience that when you're racing, when you're on glide against class, against gliders of all different classes, especially when you fly against sea gliders. Um, and if you're doing like a occasional um, exit flights that we do here on the weekends with pilots from different class gliders, pilots flying two liners, I can fly the Freedom 2 against uh, two line gliders if everyone's flying at 50% and I don't feel any difference in performance, which is incredible when you're flying a, a, you know, a glider like that. And it's, it's very, very comfortable when you, you fly along the whole day with those, against those gliders. Wow. Yeah. So there's a lot of little features and technology on, the on, this, on, this, on this glider, but when you combine all of them together, then you have this awesome package. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the handling in, in thermals is really good as well. It's, uh, it turns well, it doesn't pitch back when it, it enters a thermal, and uh, even in broken climbs and that, it, it doesn't throw you out. It's, it's quite easy to turn in and, and hold the core. So um, Shane does, the, on the uh, development phase, he, there was the guy doing lots of uh, collapses, and how, uh, how, how does the glider recover after? It recovers really well, like uh, it's just instantaneous, you'll pull a collapse and it just pops straight back out. Um, yeah, frontals, everything's just instantly uh, reopens. But the, the, way the, the way the glider was designed with the, with the technology, the variable angle attack technology makes the glider extremely um, comfortable when flown on bar because of the, the, the change of, of, of pressure on the air attachment points in the combination of the uh, airfoil. All right. Thanks, Ian. I'm looking forward to trying one. Looking forward to, having, to see you fly one. <laughs>